Sorry about that. Memory card filled up. So I had to uh, go and empty it. But uh, while a card was full, took the seat off. Got the rest of the cables off. Not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. Depends if I can get that stuck seat post out. Got some WD-40 down already. Um, yep, that's about it for this video. So uh, I'll uh, turn the camera on when there's some more progress. So talk to you later. Hey, okay, back again. As you can see top of that seat post is no longer sitting straight with the frame. That's because I took it took the bike out of the stand and used big Mr. Pipe wrench on it. So I could hold the bike between my legs to keep it steady and I just put that pipe wrench on it and put as much strength behind it as I could and that freed it off. So what I need to do is bolt the saddle back on top here just so as I've got something to hold on to to uh, wiggle that out and as you, you can also tell that the handlebars are no longer where they're meant to be because I've loosened those off they've come they came loose without a fight so this bike is a go I don't have to scrap it I was beginning to get worried that I'd have to because if you can't get that out, then to me there's no point in having the bike. So, I've got to get that out. I'm going to take those out. I think I'll take the brakes off just so they can be clean because no doubt they'll need a clean and a bit of grease. Uh, drop the wheels out. And, uh, as you've pretty much seen all that before on my channel, I'll uh, turn the camera off and back on when I've made some progress. So, uh, I'll see you in a bit. Uh, I'm back again. I think I'm going to go with my original idea of upgrading the brakes to V-brakes because I just took this one off. As you can see, all that plastic housing has uh, broke. I've noticed that on most of these it's the same if you look on that one there's none no plastic cover on that at all it's all broken off so i think as i don't have any more of this style brake spare i'll um upgrade the brakes after all i just wanted to uh, turn the video back on turn the camera back on and show you that I'm going to proceed to remove the rear brakes and the rest of the front brake and that seat post and I'll be back. Okay, so I've made some more progress. Seat post is out. There it is. I'll probably, probably, sorry my lips have gone a bit dry, uh, replace that post. For something different, something a bit better. So, throw that on there. Got all the brakes off. Got springs stuck on that one. I'll pull that one off later. Uh, um, that feels okay, that steering, so it's not making any noises, so I'll leave that. So, uh, I'm just about ready, I think, to start cleaning down the frame. I need to take those pedals off because I'm going to change those. Get this bit of cable off. Drop the wheels out. And then I can start cleaning up the frame, and then then it can all be put back together again. So uh, I'll uh, be back. In a few, okay, I'm back for what will probably be the last time for this video because I have hit a bit of a snag. Not a major snag, just a temporary one because I don't have the tool. 
I've got to get the crank off to replace the bottom bracket because as you can see is rather stiff to turn and I believe that's a sealed bottom bracket yeah it is that might be a bit of a pain in the back so I can get off having said that though everything else came off quite easy so as soon as I'm going to have to uh, put this project on hold unless I get as far as I can with it it's only about another less than two weeks before I get any cash again so uh, uh, I won't be on hold for too long so enough time to perhaps get everything cleaned up, new handlebar and stem in and um, drag is cleaned out can't take the front dragger off because it's one of those that uh, bolts in through the bottom bracket here. It's got this metal plate that you put on first and then slide your bottom bracket in. And it's held on with the uh, bottom bracket cup. So um, I don't know if I've got a spare sealed bottom bracket somewhere. Yes I have. Just remember, yes I have. I've got a used one that's still usable I can stick in there. Speaking of bearings, I might as well show you my pot of spare bearings. Something to talk about as I can't carry on with the bike at this precise moment. Where can I put you? Let's go up here, shall we? Light. Yeah, any bikes I break up where the bearings are still usable, as you can see, there's nothing wrong with them. They're dirty, but they'll clean up. Head race bearings, those are bearings for uh, one piece cranks for BMXs, which you do on the rare occasion get these on mountain bikes as well. Apollo used a one piece crank that used these bearings in the um, BB and I've got you look how crappy that is that race is plastic I actually thought I threw these out it's a plastic race it's not going to last five minutes in the bottom bracket so what do we do with them get rid of them thought I'd actually throw those out that's better ones they're in a metal race I'll say better ones there's a bear and fallen out of that one so that probably isn't a lot good that one there's a good set I think there's the odd set of wheel bearings in this tub as well ooh that one's rather greasy yeah there's nothing wrong with these bearings they're just dirty they just need a clean up I've just what I've taken out of bikes that I've uh, broken up that weren't worth the time or effort. Well, there might be wheel bearings. Oh yeah, there is some wheel bearings in here in a cage. I don't think I've got any loose bearings in there though, because I mostly deal with modern stuff, not uh, vintage. I do have a vintage bike in the shed which one day I'll pull out and do a walk around video for it so uh, I think that's about it for today I can't carry on with this as I've uh, hit that snag with the crank on the bottom bracket well I could, carry, could have carried on if I'd uh, bought the bottom bracket removal tool but I'm not going to uh, take that down and use a hammer to get the crank off because I don't want to damage the crank, it's still usable. Because if I bang on these arms with a hammer I'm going to chip all the back of this. So uh, ideally I'd like to 
remove them the proper way. Not that bad, so I've got a spare crank I could put on there if I really wanted to. Mind you, it's not looking too brilliant, is it? No, that could just be all the crap and muck that's on it. Hyperdrive. Hmm. Should not know hyperdrive. Well. I will actually say that when I got that seat bolted back on that post, it did pull out a lot easier than I thought it would. And uh, I can tell the WD-40 did soak all the way down because that tube is, the um, seat tube is wet. Seat post is wet with WD-40. Jerk the camera around. I already have a crap cameraman. Never mind. That's a shame because if I put V-brakes on this, I won't be able to use this. I couldn't afford to keep them brakes, but all the plastic has perished and fallen off. There's a bit down here on the floor that where it fell off. Right down there. So there's no point putting them back on with the plastic without the plastic covers. So uh, I will upgrade the brakes to V brakes. I think with a good clean down. There's some marks there. Probably won't be worth a great deal when it's done. Might be worth something to someone as a cheap runabout, but that's about it. Nothing special about it. Unless I decide to scrap the frame anyway and put all the parts on a better frame. I haven't really got any better frames that like the parts from this would fit on. The GT in the shed video isn't really much better. Which is why I'm not sure whether I'm going to keep that GT frame or not. That may end up in the trailer for scrap. Which reminds me. My trailer isn't out there at the minute because it's up the other end of the block. That way. Because there's some uh, metal railings up that way to stop motorcycles and motor vehicles coming through because that's not a road out there. There's just a footpath. So uh, I can't get my trailer through there so I'll just take the trailer to the railings. And the guy that takes my scrap backs his van up on the car park and you just throw it all into the back of his van. Uh, I've got to put all that back this way. Sudden pause of quiet because I've lost my train of thought. Uh, well, I've got the parts, so I suppose I might as well finish this. You know, I could keep it as a bike to loan to friends or as a spare or as a hack around on the trails because I've got a lot of weavers ways and public footpaths across the fields in my area which I like to ride on during spring and summer and as the weather is getting better here in England as you can see it's actually quite dry and nice out there today been quite cool at night. We've had a few cool days, but it's not too bad today. The tree is getting buds on it. Uh, so yeah, I'll be uh, doing some riding out on the fields. And if I can, I'll take the camera with me. I'm not sure how I'd uh, go about mounting it on the bike, and the batteries won't last about five minutes. Although, as I've said before, I'll probably get about an hour's worth of video footage on one set of batteries. And if I break that down, that's probably 
about four or five videos depending on the length I can get on here with one set of batteries. I've got one set dead over there on the um, table. I've got to recharge those. I've got another spare set in the charger, ready charged. And that charger takes four batteries, so I like to put four batteries in and charge them up. So as soon as these ones are dead, they'll go on charge. Along with these two on the table. I think those Uniwas ones over there are fully charged. Oh dear me. Here we go. These are the um, spare cables I got when I was in Wilco's this morning. Spare brake cable without an outer casing and another spare gear cable. As, uh, as I said, even though I've got them boxes of the cables down there, most of them are not long enough to do the rear brake and rear gears. Which is why when I do bikes like this, I nearly always end up having to buy new for those. I suppose if I was feeling really ambitious, I could completely take this bike apart, rub it down, get the stickers off, and respray it a different colour. If I was feeling really ambitious. <laughs> that is actually a tempting thought now. Um, problem is I've got quite a few projects like that I want to do because I want to I'm looking for a uh, old racing frame or an old gents three speed cycle because I want to do my own custom build hybrid and uh, my friend Biggles over at Mum's hasn't got any at the minute well I've got a crappy old Phillips uh, Phillips frame I got off him off the scrap pile. But, uh, I don't think I'll use that because that frame was uh, a bit rougher than I thought it was. Thought the, it looks like it had been sat in with one side facing the sun. Because uh, one side was all the nice original colour and when you look on the other side it was all white where it had faded. I thought it had just faded but when I inspected the frame a bit closer when I'd got it in my uh, workshop at Mum's there was some uh, Bubbles of rust on the frame, so ideally I'd like a half decent frame so I haven't got to respray it, but I don't mind respraying a frame. I've done it before. Um, I've actually got a bike out on the land and that I did last summer, a racing bike. Which I've score if it doesn't go up before this video, it's still in the folder of videos to go up. I have been putting like two videos up a day recently because I've got a bit carried away with the camera. I'm rambling again. I like to ramble. Uh, it was uh, again another bike I rescued off of Biggles' scrap pile. I do like a challenge. I completely rebuilt it from scratch. And used a grinder with some sort of like a sanding disc on it, not a grinder disc, to uh, rub the frame down. And that was a lot easier to get these stickers off. They are a pain in the backside to get off. Actually, that don't feel. That's not a sticker. That those aren't stickers. They're painted on. Ooh. I think. I don't feel like a sticker. I can't find the feel an edge to the stickers. Hmm. Well, they don't feel like stickers. <coughs> I actually feel like they're painted on. So if I decide to repaint this, I could do a two-tone colour. Oh, I'm yawning for some reason. <laughs> right. I don't know. 
If I respray it, it wouldn't be for several months yet. I don't like spraying in the uh, cold weather because you need a good hot day with no wind, with nice bright sun. So you can spray outside and the um, paint will dry and dry nice and hard. Whereas I find in the cold weather it doesn't dry properly. I don't have a proper heated um, spray booth, so I have to do it outside. So whenever I do any spraying with some aerosol sprays, I do it during summer when it's nice and hot. And I'll do it in sunlight. So we one off on this side on that top crossbar. In the uh, writing. Something mega, I can't remember what it says. Challenger. Muddy Fox Challenger. Not the worst bike I've ever pulled apart. I think that Triumph I pulled apart yesterday was the uh, worst, one of the worst bikes I've pulled apart. why people let them get so bad, you know, it's not hard to look after a bike. I suppose like a lot of things, they get forgotten about and left somewhere and before you know it, they're in a state. Same thing happens to cars. I suppose that's what happens to a lot of things, they get buried in the garden and forgotten about. Which I think is where these uh, three bikes I got Friday. Yeah, you know, I believe he said they'd been sitting in the garden for a while. No kidding. <laughs> no shit. Really? I never would have guessed they'd have been sit. They've been sat in a garden. I have come across worse. I mean, considering that is actually, I don't know. It is a little stiff. Well, I suppose like the black one, I might as well pull all that um, head race apart and re-grease it. I've taken it apart this far, I might as well take that off as well. I've pretty much stripped it down to just a bare frame. I could change that rear derailleur. I do have similar derailleurs to that in the um, box in my outside cupboard. Yeah, uh, when Biggles stopped doing mountain bikes, he uh, gave me loads of mountain bike parts, including wheels. And so what he used to do is uh, go down the local recycling centre, which is about a mile away from my mum's, and uh, he used to pick up any half decent mountain bikes, bring them back, fix them all up and sell them on Gumtree or eBay. But uh, he realised that um, picking up the vintage bikes and breaking them for parts actually made him more money. Because uh, a lot of the vintage parts, if they're in good condition, are worth a nice penny. <coughs> Well, there's nothing worth a penny on the bike like this. If you've got an old vintage 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s free speed or an old racer, that is just a rough, too much of a rough condition to be to be um, viable to do, then uh, strip it down for parts. Clean all the parts up. You'll often sit in his workshop with a uh, some steel wool, an old rag, toothbrush and a pot of old petrol just to clean all the old cotter cranks down and bits and bobs he'll take off a bike. All the old um, cable clips if it has any and cable guides and pulley wheels if that has it. All them old vintage bits. They'll all um, 
sell, especially if they've got a brand name like Rally or Triumph or Hummer stamped on them. Or Norman. That was a recent one he got recently, an old Norman. But they're just not worth... He could do them all up. But he'd get more from the bike, money-wise, selling the parts than he would if he'd fixed it up and sold it as a whole bike. As, um, even I've noticed on eBay, vintage bikes aren't selling too well at the minute. And with bikes like this, I could shift quite easily for the right price. But, uh, like I said, it's not... Uh, it wouldn't bring me in a lot pocket money, as I call it, because it'll only be, like, £20 minimum. 25 max, I should think. That's not worth a great deal. You might get some people on eBay put a bike up like this, fully working, with all these rough bits on the frame, and they might ask a bit more. I don't know get a bit more, but I do see people like that, asking a lot of money for a pile of crap, just because it works, and probably just because it's got a brand name on it. Whereas, I don't. I'll uh, sell them off cheap. I like doing cheap. I like buying cheap, so I sell cheap. You know, I'm not a greedy person. The only thing these bikes really owe me is my labour and time, which I have too much of, because of the medical conditions. I don't actually work. I'm not going to get into them, not on this video anyway. Uh, I've still got that spring pull off. I'll probably do that. Might as well drop that dryer off and drop the forks out. And that'll leave me to just pop the crank off if it'll come off, because that's an oil on a steel shaft. Yeah. It might be seized on, which means I may end up having to knock ten bells out but with a hammer and get it off anyway. Although the pedals did unscrew without much of a fight, so they, it might pull off, if I'm lucky. <laughs> I've been lucky with the bike so far, considering its condition. I've had bikes that look in better condition than this that have been a bigger pain in the ass to take a bike, take apart, take a bike. And there's the wheels. Nemo was sniffing around. Anyway, I've been rambling on for like 15 minutes or so. So, uh, I'm going to end the video here. As usual, if you like it, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. Any comments and questions and insults or whatever, put them in the comments below. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Hi there. This evening, I've decided I'm going to do a bit more to this bike. Um, I'm going to drop the forks out and grease up the bearings. And hopefully fit a new stem and handlebar as well. And get that job out of the way. And I'll probably fit the new brakes. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, Although the rear brake is going to give me some trouble because uh, there's no cable stop for a V-brake. So uh, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to get over that yet. I've got an idea that I might try, but yeah, uh, I'll we'll get on to that in a bit. So uh, time to shut the camera off and get on with some work. Talk to you in a little bit. Well, I'm back for a bit. As you can see, I've been busy. The only reason I've bolted one on here is because I didn't bring a pair up. I thought I did. And I didn't, so uh, I'll have to wait till morning now. I've got the pair bolted on at the front. A bit of set of bars and stem. And I've got the brakes and gear shifter sets all 
loosely hanging on there because uh, I need to find a pair of handlebar grips as the original ones were knackered. Uh, I may put the brake pads in. At least put the brake pads in the front, I suppose. That's my box of uh, outer casings. Uh, I might have something long enough in there. I might not. I don't know. I'll have a look. I'll have to have a look. Uh, yeah. Slow progress, I think, with this one. Because I've got to get that crank off. I may change the crank yet. So I may take that down and downstairs and outside and... Uh, bash it off with a hammer. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Yes, yeah, so this is the uh, other one I brought up, but as you can see, doesn't match the design on the bike, so I thought I'd brought a pair up, so I haven't. I'm not going to get another one. That's a pair. Same pair as on what should be on the rear. Uh, as you can, as I'll show you, a little bit of the spring sticking through there. Well, there's uh, three holes mounted on here. And I would, I always personally put it in the top one. You don't have to. Most factories will put them in the middle one. See? Three holes. Most factories will put it in the middle one. I like to go to the top one. That's just a personal preference. Not necessary. You could put it in the bottom one if you like. It's entirely up to you. It'll still work. Yeah, I think this one might take a bit longer to do than the black one. It's looking better with a claim. Of course there is marks and scratches in the paintwork, but it is looking a, a bit tidier. Again, most people would probably say it wasn't worth it, but I enjoy it. I just enjoy building bikes. So, uh, I'm not really fussed if it's, pardon me, worth it or not. Oh dear, itchy foot. <sighs> I've got a pair of pedals up here somewhere, I had them over, they're down there. I used pedals. A bit obvious they're used when you look at the end. They're still in good working order. The uh, internal bearings on the shaft are still good, they're not wobbly. They're just a bit scuffed on the end where pedals always get scuffed. <coughs> and uh, as I've said before, I'm not a fuss pot. Uh, I am going to change the back wheel, that's pretty much I don't think that's worth salvaging. That's a cassette on there, not a free wheel, and that's pretty eh, so I'm not going to bother. Because I'd have to strip all that out, strip all the bearings out, and then I've got to take all the free hub off, so nah. It's an old wheel. I may take the tyre off, or I may just throw it in the scrap trailer as it is. I'll have a closer look at that tyre and see if it's worth saving. If it isn't in the scrap trailer, it will go. I've got plenty of back wheels. Hopefully I've got another 7 speed. If not, I'll have to change it. I have got spare 7 speed cassette and I have got spare 7 speed freewheels. I 
think. Speaking of three wheels, there is one here. How many speed is this one? That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, there we go. I've got six wheels. Six wheel. A six-speed wheel in the cupboard, then I can change the free wheel. So that's not a problem. My psoriasis is playing up. Yeah, I've got psoriasis. Hence all the red blotches on my arm. Ooh, pardon me. Ooh, pardon me again. That actually reminds me I'm due to take my evening pill for my diabetes. If I can be bothered, I'll uh, stick the brake pads in. Dear me, it's a bit windy in here tonight. Hoo wee! That was a strong one and all. Anyway, moving on from the gas. Something's going past, the blue light's on. Are we going to see it, or did we miss it? No, nope, there it goes. It's an ambulance. See a lot of them round here. Anyway. Uh, depends how bored I get later. If I get bored enough, I may bash that crank off with a hammer. Yeah. That'll be a video for another day, I think. So I think I've done enough with this one tonight, so I'm going to call it quits. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button. Any questions, comments, you know where to leave them. And uh, I'll talk to you later.